This is Vasant Filament from Philips 3D Solutions and you're watching the 5 minute drill to creating your very first 3D Wow EX content. I'm going to be your drill sergeant for roughly the next 5 minutes and walk you through all of this. If you have no idea what I'm going to be talking about, please don't worry yet. Since this is the first screencast in a series that we are going to be doing, I would like to have this first one fairly self-contained. So I'm going to start with a very short introduction to what this is all about. Let's start with the hardware. What you see here is a 42 inch auto stereoscopic. That's just a complicated way of saying 3D display. This is a product that is in the market today and you can buy these displays from Philips 3D Solutions. What's really super cool about these displays is that you get to be Superman and not Clark Kent. Well, what I really meant to say there was, you don't need any glasses to see 3D in all of its glory. Wow VX is the technology behind all of this magic, and as you may have guessed by now, these displays require content in a special format, the Wow VX format. How does this format look like? Well, it looks like this. It's simply 2D plus depth. What you see there at the top part of the slide is a single frame from a 2D video sequence and the bottom part is the extra information that we need to create in order to view the frame in 3D. This additional piece of information is often referred to as the depth image and it determines where the corresponding 2D pixels are rendered in the third dimension. Let's specifically take a look at the flower. The corresponding pixels in the depth image are white and this means that the flower is going to be rendered in front of the display at a distance proportional to the whiteness. The regions in the original image that correspond to the black pixels on the depth image will on the other hand be rendered behind the display. To get something rendered exactly on the display plane, the corresponding pixels in the depth image should have a gray value of 128. That was a reasonable amount of effort for a single frame, but if you are a content creator, then you're faced with the unfortunate situation of having to do this for thousands of frames, even for creating a small video clip. This is where the Huawei X Blue Box solution comes in. It is a simple client server solution where the Blue Box server sits inside your network and handles requests simultaneously from client machines that have the Huawei X Spacer software installed. I'm now going to switch to my desktop and show you how to convert a traditional 2D video clip into a 3D clip using Spacer. So this is my desktop and I'm going to bring up Spacer. The first thing you should see is a splash screen and that should list uh, the blue boxes that are in your network. I've got one on mine and I'm just going to click OK there. The next thing I'm going to do is open a new project and Spacer allows you to convert different kinds of video into the 3D format and for, this, for the purposes of this uh, tutorial I'm just going to pick 2D video and browse to the location where I've stored my video. And I've stored my video as a sequence of files. Um, this is often something that uh, people do. We also support a variety of input formats. So if you've got, let's say, Windows Media Video encoded files, that'll do just as well. So I'm going to pick the first frame in the sequence and I have to set a frame rate because that information isn't available in this input format and click OK. What Spacer now does is it auto detects shortcuts. Now shots are portions of a sequence, a video sequence where things don't change too much. The camera pretty much moves very slowly and the image content uh, really doesn't change that much. So let me just move through the timeline that we have below here and you can see this orange balloon bobbing up and down at the front over here. This is a very simple sequence so it has just a single shot and when you're converting more complicated content you probably want to work shot by shot. And here is a shortcut and that is the first frame in a shot. Now what you have to do 
is to help spacer out by providing it some kind of annotation of the depth for certain frames in the sequence and then what spacer will do is to fill out the rest for you automatically um, so I'm going to annotate this first the depth for this first uh, frame right here and the way you do it is typically say annotate right click and say annotate and that'll bring up your favorite editor and you can configure it to be whatever you want it to be and here you would trace out the balloon and create the corresponding depth image I'm not a very good artist so what I'm going to do is cheat a little bit I've already prepared an annotated image here I'm just gonna copy it so typically what you would do is select all copy it and that's in your clipboard go back to spacer and paste it right here and by checking this checkbox and dragging the slider around you can actually see how well your handcrafted depth image fits the original 2D image the next thing I'm gonna do is to click on the space shot button down here and leave the rest of the work to spacer you'll start to see new depth images filling up here on the timeline and this is the result of the smart processing that happens on the blue box there are various indications of progress uh, these red boxes right here as well as uh, the progress bar down here and the remaining amount of time that it'll take to complete the entire shot let's kinda take a look at some of the new depth images that have come back and see how well they fit to the corresponding original images as you can see the fit is pretty accurate and you don't have to do a lot of work to get here I just took a very short break to grab myself a cup of coffee while Spacer merrily went about cranking out the depth images for the remainder of the video switching back to my desktop again you can now see that the spacing operation is complete 2D plus depth is now available for the entire shot if you've got a 3D display connected to your computer then you can preview your work using the play shot button or you could decide to export your video into a file using the export button that I just pressed the export dialog allows you to choose between two different formats that we currently support while exporting which is either Windows Media Video or a still image sequence and these other tabs allow you to pick a few advanced options while you export your work so that's it for this screencast thanks for watching and I'll see you next time